Hey folks, Pastor Josh here. Hey, hope all is doing well with you guys. Today we're going to be looking at episode three of the Should I Principle Decision Principles series here from the Watermark Community Church at watermark.org. If you go to these websites and look at this, you can find and print out your own um, your own copy of this as well. What we're going to be looking at today principles number five. And number six today, in the last two videos, we looked at one, two, and three, and four. And those, I will refresh your memory. Those are, number one was, what biblical principles should inform my decision? Number two, do I have all the facts? Do I have all the facts? Those were found, if you want to write these down, in Proverbs 2.6. The first one, number one, Proverbs 2.6. And Proverbs 1, 20 through 23. The second principle in the first video was called, Do I Have All the Facts? That is found in Proverbs 18, verse 13, as well as Proverbs 18, verse 17. And then in the second video, we went through a couple more. And in number three, we went through, Is the pressure of time forcing me to make a premature decision? And that is found in Proverbs 19, verse 2, Proverbs 21, verse 5. And then the second portion of the, of the second video, we did number four. Number four is what are the possible motives driving my decisions? What are the possible motives driving my decisions? And we found those Proverbs 16, verse 2, Proverbs 20, verse 9, and Proverbs 21, verse 2. You can watch these two videos already on, on the YouTube channel there, as well as uh, listen to the podcast of those two things on anchor.fm or your, your uh, known ma uh, major podcasting platform. But we're going to go on today. We're going to be looking at verse, not, we're going to be looking at Proverbs still, but we're going to be looking at principles five and principles six today. So principles five says this, how should past experiences inform my decision? In principle six is this, what is the collective counsel of my community? But before we do that, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Let's ask God to bless our time together, all right? Father, we thank you today for, Lord, your grace and your mercy. Father, I pray that you'd bless and minister to us today. Help us, Lord, to look into your word and gain greater understanding for what you have for us in this word. And we thank you for that. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Principle number five, how should past experiences inform my decision? Now, if you look at this and you think about this, past experiences do inform our decisions. We, we gauge our decisions based upon how similar decisions have panned out in the past. That's how we, that's how we get experience. That's how we gauge our, our, our decisions by past experiences, past failures, past successes. So how should past experiences inform my decisions? Now, Proverbs 26, 11 says this, like a dog that returns to its own vomit is a fool who repeats its, his folly. So talking about bad decisions here, if we don't learn from our mistakes, because we have mistakes, we, we do make mistakes. If, if we don't learn from those mistakes, and, and, I, and I, I want you to take a moment and I want you to think about the mistakes that you've made in your life, the, the, the decisions you've made that you, would, that you would say, Pastor Josh, this was not a good decision. Those kinds of decisions, I want you to take a moment and I want you to think of those decisions that were bad decisions. And I want to ask you, I, I want you to ask yourself, just as I ask myself, when I was preparing for this particular section of this video, did I learn from those past mistakes? Did I learn from the decisions that I made that were maybe were not a good decision? Did I learn from that? Did I, did, did, did I allow God to show me a better way? So our past experiences do inform our decisions, but how do they inform them? How do they do that? If it's a bad decision, we shouldn't go back to those bad decisions. We should be learning 
from our decisions. And if they're good decisions, then yes, learn from those decisions and try to make the same type of good decisions. Those are things that is important. Those are things that that God would want us to do, to learn from those mistakes and to move forward in those in those decisions. Now, Proverbs 17 10. If you want to turn there with me, you can. I'm gonna I've gone turn there. I'm gonna read it for you out of the modern English version, 1710 of Proverbs. A reproof enters deeper into a wise man than a hundred strips stripes into a fool. So let me read that again. A reproof enters deeper into a wise man than a hundred stripes into a fool. So understand what 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 Solomon is talking about here, or the writer of this proverb is talking about here, is that we learn from our mistakes when we are wise, when we're following God, when we when we and see that that was a that was a big thing and how I've been looking at my life and how I've been looking at the things that I do uh, in in my life is that am I allowing God to walk with me through my life. And if I need to be changing things, if I need to be uh, walking in the ways of God and, and, and I'm not in there and, and the reproach that I'm getting from that, is it making an effect? Is it changing my life? Is it changing the way that I, that I view my understanding of things? You see, this is things, these are things we have to think about in our life. How 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 is my experiences informing my decisions in life? And we have to look at good decisions. We have to look at bad decisions. We have to look at how we dealt with those bad decisions. We have to look at how we how we dealt with the good decisions. Did we did we give the credit to God for those decisions, or did we give the credit to ourselves? for the good decisions that we've made. Did, did, did we give credit to God or to ourselves? And see, those are, those are things that we can view. Uh, and, and, and that in and of itself is a dessert is a learning process because God wants to get all the glory and all the credit because the things that we do, we do because God wants us to, we do because God guides and directs or should be guiding and directing in our lives should be. And if he is, then he gets the glory. But if we're doing our own thing, then we get the glory. And is that a really a good decision to give ourselves credit for something that God's already given to us in the first place? Is that really a good decision? I don't know. I think it's a it's a uh, good thing to think about. I think we need to be giving ourselves uh, the understanding that God, <clears throat> excuse me, that God deserves the glory deserves the credit for the things in which we've done. There's been things in my life that, uh, and, and I don't like to talk much about myself and my own experiences, but there, there's been things in my life that have worked out for, for the best for me, worked out really well. And I was asked one time, um, what, what was I doing to cause this growth? And I said, nothing I would have done, wouldn't have done anywhere else. God gets the glory. I don't. It's by my leading and guiding of him that he is that he is moving and in, in doing things. That that is that is the proper perspective. God gives us the ability, but he gets the glory. Okay? So, number five. Think about that. How is your past experiences informing your decisions? And if they're informing your decisions in a way that is um, profitable. In a way that is proper, that God desires, then keep going that way. But if they're informing your decisions into a way that is destructive, in a way that is that is uh, pulling you away from God, pulling you away from the understanding of who God is, then you need to re rethink those decisions. You need to get back with God and allow God to minister to you, and and allow you to 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 uh, to allow you to turn back to Him and trust Him. Okay. So that is one thing. Number five. Think about that. How should past experiences inform my decisions? Number six. What is the collective counsel of my community? Now, community could be 
a number of things. Community could be your family. Community could be your group of friends, your church family, uh, your workmates that you, that you, but, but they have to be people that you value. They have to be people that you value. Your, your community uh, has to be people that you value and you, and, and you value their decisions and you value their input and you value their opinions. They can't just be anybody off the street. Although that sometimes that does, that can gauge someone's um, decision either to make a decision or to wait and not make a decision. But as a whole, as a, as a context of, of this thing, the collective council of my community is referring to the people that you trust, the people that you, that you, um, that their, their opinion matters. Their opinion is, is something that you want to, you want to take advantage of, you know, in a sense, and you want to, to allow those things to be in your life. That is what um, this community thing is talking about. So when you make a decision, when you're making a decision, the best thing to do, the best thing to do is to number one, pray. We've talked about this in the first couple of episodes of this series. Pray. Give God time to speak to you. Time crunches. We talked about time is, is, is time constraints in, in uh, affecting my decision. God will answer on his time. So pray, ask God, talk to God, pray, talk to him. Number two, remember, remember how God answers our prayers. Number one, through prayer. Number two, through his word. Number three, to his, through his people. The people we trust, the people we love, the people we value, their opinions. These three avenues, God answers prayer. So number one, pray. Give it to God's hand. Give it into God's hand. We, we, we talked about that in the first video. Major decisions that are life-changing decisions have to be bathed in prayer. So number one, you pray. Number two, you spend time in the word of God. You spend time allowing God to speak to you through his word. That is something that we must do. We must allow God to speak to us through his word, spending time with him, right? And number three, through his people, through, through your community. What is the collective guidance of the community? And usually, if it is a, if, if it is a godly, a God-driven decision, their, their input the input of those who you trust, that you care about, that you you value their opinion, those will complement and confirm what God has already been telling you in the first place. So if, if you get conflicting things, let's just say God's telling you one thing and your community is telling you something else and you're not sure, don't make a move. Get clarity get understanding before you make a move, before you make a major decision. Allow God to work, allow God to move. Either God will tell you to do something or God will, won't tell you to do something. And, he, and if he's wanting you to do it, he'll confirm it through his people. Okay. So allow, give God time, allow God the time to answer your questions, answer your prayers, allow God to do that. All right. So number six, number five, how should past experiences inform my decisions? Number six, what are the collective counsel of my community? Please take these things to heart. Take these things to heart. If you, if, if you find value in this content, please, if you're watching it on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, like the videos, share them across your social media platforms. If, you, if you're listening to this on, on a podcast form, please subscribe to the podcast. I have new podcasts coming out on a weekly basis. So please subscribe to the podcast. All right. So with, with that being said, I am Pastor Josh. Thank you for joining me today for this short, brief look at decision-making principles from the book of Proverbs. Until next time, I'm Pastor Josh. God bless you and God be with you. Until then, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.